Hey everyone, quick announcement. I am now available as a coach on Medify. Whether you just want to play me, get some matchup experience, or you're looking for in-depth replay analysis, you can find it all on there. I'm also doing a limited giveaway for three free sessions. To enter, you need to be a YouTube subscriber, follow me on Twitter, and comment on this video with hashtag giveaway. That's it for the announcement, now let's get into the video. Edge guarding is me brawler. Should you do it? And if yes, how do you do it the most effective way? In this video, I'll go over some of the most efficient way to edge guard as me brawler, with new discoveries, but also just several underused techniques. Let's go. The first thing we have to think about is, should I even try to edge guard as brawler? The answer to that is neither a simple yes or no. On one hand, Brawler has amazing net strapping and decent two framing options, which makes stage positioning so rewarding. He also has the fifth highest fall speed in the game, so no matter what you go for, you will fall like a rock and put yourself in considerable risk. On the other hand, Brawler has long lasting areas, far reaching burst options and insanely potent cheese options, so it would be a waste to just ignore edge guarding as a whole. In general, I recommend only going for these methods when your opponent has very little resources left to recover, or if they have to recover in a predictable way. Don't try to force an edge guard when it's not possible, but keep your stage positioning for as long as you can. In most cases, it is better to just wait or try to edge guard with shot put, which can honestly be more effective than anything else depending on the situation, so keep that in mind. With that being said, here are my top edge guarding methods from me brawler. I will give each method a rating for safety, in other words, how much risk you expose yourself to when going for the edge guard, reliability, how likely it is to get the hit considering every character's recovery, and potency, how easily a method can take a stop. Deep backer and deep burning dog pick both cover pretty much the same purpose, punish directional air dodges and linear recoveries. The best way to go as deep off stage as possible is to jump backwards off the stage then double jump back here in the spot the opponent has to cross, and faint jump back to ledge. Alternatively, you can also grab ledge first and then time your edge guard with the ledge drop double jump back here. Either way, this method is guaranteed to punish directional air dodges, and BDK can go even further off stage for that purpose. Using back air is a bit safer, as even if you get reversal, you can usually still recover by reacting quickly with faint jump. BDK can go further off stage, but of course, if you miss, you're guaranteed dead, so practice this a few times before going for it in tournament. Characters this can work well against are those who rely on air dodges to recover, like Ganon, or characters with predictable recovery routes, like Ken and Ryu. For safety, I give it a 3 out of 5, for reliability a 2, and for potency a 3. Ledge Slip Nutria is long lasting and can cover pretty much any linear recovery from below. This is especially true on stages like Kalos, which prevent recoveries from under the ledge and also offer you some additional safety in form of a wall jump. To do a ledge sit nair, walk up to ledge, crouch by holding down and then slowly roll your control stick to the side. As soon as you're airborne, input attack and you'll be performing a non-fastful nair as close to the stage as possible. Because doing this will usually result in you hitting a weak nair only, it should only be used if the opponent has no way to make it back afterwards. Characters this works well against are, for example, Captain Falcon, Diddy Kong and tether recoveries like Joker. In any case, be ready to tech in case you get hit or trade with the opponent. For safety this gets a 2, for reliability a 4 and for potency a 2. Double Jump Nair works similarly to Ledge Slip Nair, but aims to hit diagonal or horizontal recoveries with a stronger hit. To perform it, Run off stage, drop to the appropriate height, depending on the opponent's recovery angle and timing, and then double jump Nutria back towards stage. This is especially useful against teleport recoveries like Palutena or Mewtwo, and horizontal recoveries like Fox or Little Mac. If you try to intercept recoveries with a hitbox, you of course also put yourself at risk, but if executed right, you will usually get hit back on stage or at least trade with the move. Sometimes you also need to adjust your timing for so long that you won't make it back on stage with a double jump only, in which case you should simply upbeat to latch and regain stage positioning as quickly as possible. I give this method a safety rating of 4, reliability of 3 and efficiency of 3. 
Reverse SAK can be an incredible edge guarding two framing tool against linear recoveries. It can catch teleports, is disjointed enough to beat most other moves and lasts for quite a while. Its biggest weakness would be running SAK in the first place, but that is not something I'll consider in this rating. Depending on your timing, almost any recovery can be snatched on the way to ledge, but it still relies on the opponent not having the resources to simply recover above you, as it's quite telegraphed and there's no hitbox pointing away from stage. It works best against characters that recover in a linear trajectory below the stage, like Pit, Weefa Trainer and even Lucina or Mario, as long as you predict their timing. I give it a safety rating of 5, reliability of 3 and potency of 5. Helikick away from stage can be really strong, but also really risky. To perform it, you can run or ledge slip off the ledge and then either directly input Helikick or double jump first and then Helikick. Because you don't want to snap the ledge, you need to hold down for most of the time during the move. But you also have to hold slightly towards stage, or else you'll be too far away to snap ledge afterwards. And on top of that, you want to hold away from stage during the final hit of the move for maximum knockback. It all comes down to how well you mastered your tech skill, so with practice you can become consistent with it. Other upsides of this method includes the lag and tangibility while kicking and its immense kill power, while the downsides are that it's only active every fifth frame, so teleport recoveries can often slip through and if you get hit somehow, you'll of course be off stage without a double jump and very poor recovery options. So for safety this gets a rating of 1 if you haven't mastered it and a 3 if you have, for reliability a 3 as well, and for potency a 4. And finally, we have Thrupper into Footstool or Nair. This setup has just recently been found by Isem and is an almost risk-free attempt to edgeguard any recovery going low. To execute it, you have to run off the ledge and reverse Thrupper towards stage, while the opponent is between you and the ledge. If done successful, you will snap ledge yourself while your opponent is still in hit stun which gives you time to release from ledge in either footstool or neutral air. There are a lot of intricacies regarding this method, which depend on character, momentum, which thrupper hit was the last one, etc. It would take too long to go over all the lab work here, so you can expect another video going in-depth about it, either on my channel or on Esam's channel. So yeah, I guess you have to subscribe to both of us. In any case, I give this method a safety rating of 5, reliability of 2 and potency of 4. That's it for the most important edgeguard methods for me brought. There are of course a lot more things you can do, like drop down down air, Fortnite flash, FMP and other stuff, but I felt like these were the ones I had the most success with. If I missed anything, let me know in the comments and until the next video.